In our last segment, we showed you President Biden's ambitious agenda for his first 100 days. And Andrew, he spoke with uh, Congressman about how the new president reversing much of what the Trump administration did as it relates to rolling back rights for the LGBTQ community. This is not just politics. We are talking about basic rights and personal safety when it comes to millions of Americans. Hate crimes? Well, they increased across the board during the Trump administration, with experts saying that Donald Trump's hateful rhetoric fueled that increase. That includes attacks against the LGBTQ community, which went up for the past three straight years. And let's bring in my next guest to discuss, Charlotte Clymer, a transgender writer and LGBTQ advocate. She a graduate of West Point. She spent six years in the U.S. Army, noting she witnessed unabashed homophobia and transphobia from her fellow soldiers in the military, did nothing to stop it. Charlotte came out as transgender after she left the service and faced more discrimination. She is also former press secretary for the Human Rights Campaign, which advocates on behalf of that population. Thank you so much for a few minutes, Charlotte. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Um, you know, people, if they're not directly impacted, may see, um, you know, just another executive order. But by rolling back the ban for the transgender community as it relates to the military, talk about why that's so important and how that literally changes some people's lives. Well, first of all, it affects the entire LGBTQ community, uh, not just the 15,000 uh, trans folks who were serving in the military when that ban went into place. The military has always been a bellwether for equality in general, whether it was uh, the military being desegregated in 1947 by President Truman or the uh, lift on the exclusion of women from the military a few decades later. Uh, you know, this is uh, an ongoing process in which we see equality that's led by the military and expands the rest of the country. So this is a, a very big, important step in ensuring that LGBTQ people are seen as equal partners in the uh, great democratic experiment. You know, I heard a line from somebody that said, hey, you know what, uh, a president can change policies, but he can or she can't change hearts and minds. Tell me how it's different than what we saw for the last four years, forgetting who's in the Oval, the climate itself. You know, I, I, I think that uh, a president's biggest job, in fact, is changing hearts and minds. And what this executive order does uh, is communicating to the American people that trans non-binary people uh, and more broadly LGBTQ people uh, are just like anyone else. We uh, pay our taxes. We serve in the military. Uh, we're lawyers, doctors, public school teachers. We're really equal partners um, in the public square. And it lets us know that we have a champion in the Oval Office who's going to make sure that we're treated just like everyone else, no better or no worse. You know, I mentioned uh, that hate crimes spiked uh, across a lot of different demographics, but more than data, did it feel more dangerous for you and a lot of people you speak for the last four years? It absolutely did. I, 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 I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, last year, 44 trans non-binary people were killed in the United States. The vast majority of them were black and brown trans women. And what we've seen is that Trump's rhetoric and his systematic attack on LGBTQ people and transgender people in particular has really enabled violence and discrimination against our community. Uh, you know, we, we really are just like everyone else. Uh, we have families, kids in schools, we have our jobs. Uh, we just want to go to work, uh, live the American dream, and, and be part of society. Um, and I think we're getting there with champions like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the, uh, in the uh, Oval Office. And I'm curious, was the palpable fears, uh, you know, from all the stupidity about people not, you know, making wedding cakes to the more egregious uh, cases where we saw outright populations denied equality, that people the ugliest elements felt that they had a license to do things or that if a crime was committed here, that those who perpetrated it wouldn't face consequences? Well, many of them have not. Uh, you know, there was a Marine stationed, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the Philippines who murdered a transgender woman. Uh, and he has not faced appropriate consequences for that yet. Uh, and not just, you know, abroad, of course, in the United States. Uh, there are unsolved cases of the murders of uh, trans people, and in particular, black trans women that have gone unsolved. Uh, you know, the, the murders of trans people, I think, are, treat, are treated in a trivial manner when they happen. Uh, victims are misgendered. Uh, their families do not get the kind of support 
uh, that would normally occur for the, uh, the family of a victim of a murder. Uh, and so, you know, we do believe that Trump has directly enabled this in a very egregious way. And it comes from having the kind of moral leadership in the Oval Office that communicates to the American people that we are all one country and that we all should be united to ensure that no one gets left behind and certainly that no one is vulnerable to violence and discrimination. You've mentioned, I saw in a piece that you wrote um, uh, last year uh, for the Washington Post, I believe, that Biden has changed uh, as a person in his positions, including on issues of equality um, with the times. Four years from now, Charlotte, you and I sit down. What would you say this was a consequential presidential term in terms of making the population that I speak for feel more equal in this country? That's a great question. That's a really great question. Well, you know, right at the bat, this has been probably the best week for LGBTQ rights uh, in years. Uh, on the very first day, President Biden signed an executive order that banned discrimination on the basis of gender identity and sexual orientation within the purview of the federal government. Then that, that doesn't end all discrimination throughout the throughout the United States, particularly in state and local jurisdictions. But it does send a so strong signal that the federal government uh, is pro LGBTQ and certainly that. that LGBTQ citizens will be treated like everybody else. One of the biggest pieces, though, that needs to be done is passing the Equality Act. Now, this is highly popular legislation. More than 70% of Americans support it, including, I, I believe, about half of Republican voters. And what it would do is ban uh, discrimination universally against LGBTQ people uh, in all 50 states and six territories, uh, and including the District of Columbia. It would ensure that we are not discriminated against on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation anywhere in the country. The House passed it last year, or excuse me, uh, about 18 months ago in a very strong bipartisan vote. The Senate refused to consider it, excuse me, Mitch McConnell refused to bring it to the floor of the Senate for consideration. And so what we're hoping is that this year, if not this year, but if not this year, certainly in the next couple of years, that the Equality Act will be passed. Uh, and that will be, I, I think, one of the last uh, big remaining pieces of the fight for LGBTQ quality. Amazing that we're we're crossing fingers that we can have an Equality Act passed in this country. But there you have it. Uh, Charlotte, I always appreciate you giving us the time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Up next, everyone, a former special agent with the FBI. He'll join us to discuss the ongoing threat from right wing extremists. And they don't go away just because of the riot at the Hill is now in the rearview mirror.